Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss Wizard One video. And today's video is gonna be more of an experimental one again. Now, not too much of a long time ago, we checked out the fastest plane that there is, and that is the X-15, which is a very, very interesting plane indeed. And that one actually had a top speed of 6.7 Mach, which is crazy. Yeah, in that video, we flew that plane, the North American X-15, and reached that speed quite easily because that plane had rocket engines. Now, by the way, Mach 6 is around six times the speed of sound, which is Mach 1. And it hit the world record in 1967, thanks to its pilot, William J. Pete Knight. That was a pretty badass guy, definitely. Now, ever since that, humanity hasn't become much faster in the Earth's atmosphere, basically. And today, let's change that a little bit with our SR-71 Blackbird that we have right here. This is not a normal SR-71 Blackbird. This is more of a modified version of it that has uh, engines that are a little bit more on the powerful side, but let's see about that today. All right, this is the cockpit in the SR-71 Blackbird. This is also a very fast plane. In fact, I think this is the second fastest plane that there is at Mach 3 because it doesn't have any rocket engines, which I have actually changed now. Now for this takeoff, we want to really only go for some very light touches on the throttle to not fall apart immediately because that is something that we're going to, you know, want to have. And there we go. We have a slight light permanent tail strike because the engines are actually so heavy now. Uh, yeah, there's a few design flaws here in my modification, but you know, there's always some, right? Now the takeoff is actually the hardest part. I'm really only pushing like 5% of what these two engines can actually give. These are incredibly powerful, but we'll need them today for our flight that will be ab above Mach 6. Now, as you might be able to hear, our engines are completely quiet at the moment because we are like running the engines at 5% and there's a little bit of a bug here here in the flight simulator that it just won't properly reproduce the sound of what a real SR-71 with rocket engines would sound like. And there we go. With only a little bit of input in the engines, we already have reached a Mach, which is already the speed of sound. We are faster than most modern aircraft these days. Oh, wow. Okay. And we're gaining more and more speed. So this will be a pretty interesting video, won't it? And maybe let's push a little bit harder here on the engine, right? Here we go. We are pushed into the seats because uh, this is uh, a lot of G-forces and we are gaining more and more speed. Speed. And there we go. We've already reached three Mach, which by the way is how fast a normal SR-71 would be able to go, but no problem. All right. We're looking good on our flight. We have already reached Mach 6 and we're not at all running the engines at full power. Let's maybe do that. All right. Mach 9, Mach 10. This is incredibly loud. We're running at 50% full power. Oh, oh, all right. I didn't see that one coming. All right. Um, this is a little weird now. All right, so here we are flying through the Californian wilderness and it's incredibly loud here in my headphones. At Mach 16, we impacted a mountain quite a lot. But what happened if you crashed into a mountain like at 16 times the speed of sound? I mean, you know, you're just gonna fly right through it, right? No problem at all, right? Okay, this didn't work out. But there we go. I'm very much impressed by the performance of these two engines. Maybe I pushed a little bit too hard here on the, on the performance, but I mean, it flies. <laughs> Something I would really like to find now is the absolute top speed of this plane. So let's do that now. Let's put the gear back up and uh, turn the engines on a little bit. Let's maybe go a little bit relaxed here on the flight. Just so that we don't overstress it. Let's give power very slowly. There we go. We're already running at 50%. Let's just go very, very gently here on the throttle. And over time, we can increase the thrust a little bit more and more. Go. We're already running at 10%, which is uh, quite a lot. <laughs> and Ken. And there we go. We are at around 40% now. How about 50? There we go. We're giving half of what this engine can do. Let's just be very careful with this flight because we don't want to crash into the Californian mountains again, right? We're looking good. Time for 100% of power. Uh, and this is actually looking like a good flight so far. And we are reaching quite some speeds. Mach 16, Mach 17, 18, 19, and counting. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And uh, the camera here is very, very much confused. <laughs> well, wow. and there we go go. We have actually reached the point where we have run out of fuel because uh, I did not manage to put in a, a lot of fuel into this small fuselage. Let's just fill that plane up again and there we go. We're up, up and running without any issues and we are still climbing on the speed part. 30 Mach. Okay, this is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. Actually, we are uh, reaching quite a lot of altitude as well. We can already see the stars, which is uh, very interesting and my computer is definitely struggling to handle the speed that we're on right now. We're obviously flying across the Pacific Ocean. Um, uh, 
um, at Mach 16. And we're actually at 100,000 feet already of altitude. That is crazy. Let's actually go a little bit, you know, down back into the Earth's atmosphere because we're losing the, uh, the ability to control an airplane, which is probably not very good. But right now, our speed is only increasing because uh, we're so far away from Earth that it doesn't even matter. I think we actually have left the atmosphere at this point, haven't we? Yeah, we're just climbing on altitude. We have basically turned this one into a rocket, right? Yeah, that might have not been that good of an idea. Let's just reduce our altitude a little bit and get back to the normal plane mode that this plane can also do perfectly fine. Let's fill the fuel tanks again and continue our flight across the Pacific Ocean. Come on. Okay, maybe that doesn't work out too well, does it? Come on. All right, we're back down to Earth. Let's go ahead and uh, get some more power in here and see what we can do. All right, we're back at 100% power and we're still cruising at around Mach 72. Shouldn't like Asia show up in a second or two? I mean, yeah, I know the Pacific Ocean is quite large, but it cannot be that large. Come on, we're flying at Mach 80. Okay, we've been flying for like five minutes and we're pretty close to Hawaii already, so that's kind of ridiculous, but you know. All right, now we have gone back into rocket mode, like space shuttle mode, if that makes sense. So our top speed was around 80 Mach, which is again, 80 times the speed of sound, which is just crazy and pretty much ridiculous actually <laughs> as well, but you know. All right, now we'll come back to the United States of America. All right, so uh, obviously what we just did uh, was not realistic. This aircraft's fuselage is obviously not even able to handle the speed of Mach 80. Or is it? Let's find out. Uh, actually, we have turned on the damage thing now so that the actual aircraft fuselage can be damaged by over speed or over G limits. So that will actually show us if the SR-71 is actually able to go faster than the speed of Mach 3. Also, just building rocket engines into this plane is probably very unrealistic as well. But, you know, let's just see. Maybe this can work out as well. All right, let's again be very careful here on the takeoff. That's actually the part that sucks the most. It takes a while to properly... There we go. Again. All right, let's just cheat ourselves up into the air and imagine this didn't happen. All right, there we go. We have entered flying state. Let's just run the engines at a very low percentage of power and see how fast we can go. We want to be really careful here. Okay, that might have not been careful. Enough. Yeah, obviously planes are not able to handle speeds like that, right? So that doesn't work out. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Could we build something faster than Mach 6? Most probably, but, you know, why? <laughs> why would you do that? You know, you cannot make money with it, so why bother doing it? So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.